Welcome back to Analysis, where we've been looking at the violent attacks in Pakistan recently. This part of the program, we're joined by Chowdhury Ansar Mahmood, president of the lawyers' wing of the London branch of the Pakistan Muslim League. In the first half, we concentrated on attacks and who was responsible for them, as well as responsible for the Pakistani situation, security situation. In this half, we're looking at the broader picture in the region and ask what the implications are for neighbouring Afghanistan and India, as well as for the West. Uh, Chowdhury, welcome to the program. Um, so the government is talking now about a military, uh, a military response. The United States has uh, restarted its drone attacks. Do you think this is really going to cure it or is it just going to make it worse? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Reese, for inviting this program. I think at the moment, because there is a uh, in India, there's a new government, uh, and, uh, and also in Afghanistan, after the election, there's a new government. The, the, the scenario of the region is totally been changed, and the, uh, we are looking forward to be, bring the peace. As um, uh, Prime Minister yesterday, he has given a very vast statement that we want to bring the, the peace in the, in the region, not only in Pakistan, in India, in Afghanistan, in all that region. And uh, we want to change this uh, the current situation not in uh, that in terrorism we want to change in trade so the trade should be in india pakistan and afghanistan and all other the neighboring country of the pakistan so we 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 are working on that our uh, government is uh, the 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 most important thing is the the first to bring the peace in the region then the the to make the financial hub in the south asia and the, the third is the to promote the trade not the terrorism. Hamad, um, the drones program, drone strikes have, be, have begun again after a period where they were, they were suspended. Um, when President Obama made his speech to the West Point Military Academy a couple of weeks ago, he said, uh, with these attacks, we've got to, be, we've got to make sure um, that we don't create more enemies than we take out on the battlefield. But the drones attacks famously or infamously um, do precisely the, the opposite. How will that help the situation? I, I don't believe it will help the situation. I think uh, what problem is that it's actually interesting timing because last week, uh, High Court in Islamabad um, uh, asked the police to investigate a former CIA station chief for murder and other charges because of these drone strikes. Uh, strikes, you know, they are very unpopular in Pakistan, and they also create, you know, more militants. And there was a report last year by Amnesty International, which was uh, said that this could constitute as you know war crimes as well. So the the thing is the. What, what it does is just like an end, endless cycle. So you kill some militants, and you also, some other people also get killed. Civilians get killed at the same time, and then people come for more revenge attacks. And uh, so this is not really the solution. You know, it, it's, it's just been uh, creating. It's like a snowball effect. So it just making the situation much worse right now. So America is uh, has done a very kind of um, this kind of CIA attack right now in Waziristan. That's not really. Uh, going to, it's not really the solution that Pakistan really needs. I mean, you need, need to go after these militants, and this is probably the job for the Pakistan military to be doing it rather than uh, mm. looking to. Uh, Ibrahim, Pakistan's been complicit in this whole drone operation, though, hasn't it? It's been a partner in it. Basically, John, if you don't deal with them properly, then America will do uh, you know, uh, drone attacks. Of course, you know, they got no option left with them. But all this government needs to do is to have a chat properly with the army, give them confidence, and just do it. Because last government, they have done it, and they have delivered the you know, Malakan division. You can see the results. But now this government is reluctant. We are supporting them. We are not saying that this government should go here and there. We are supporting them even. Some opportunist uh, you know, political uh, parties, they are trying to you know, uh, topple the government through by unfair means even. They are ready. They are coming to Pakistan, very tiny people. They, they are not big people, but uh, they've got some, uh, you know, religious uh, followings, this and that. But PPP, they are supporting this government for, for the, you know, uh, sake of democracy. But government is reluctant. We don't know why. They are reluctant. You know, if you see, last year, Mr. Skandar, uh, he was with his family, three people, uh, diplomatic you know, enclave just nearby the parliament. Uh, interior minister, we couldn't see. In this incident, interior minister, he was, you know, on eyed with the prime minister, he was not there. After two days, he, he said, oh, okay, this and that, nothing. I mean, the government has to be felt. People, you know, like in last government, 
um, uh, our interior minister, he used to go everywhere. He used to go everywhere. No, otherwise people say, oh, where, where is the government? That the first question comes to, you know, everybody's tongue. Where is the government? We, we didn't see interior minister. Okay. Uh, Mutsa, do you think that, uh, <coughs> what do you think the effect of these attacks may be on, uh, on India? Do you see them, do you see them spilling over? Well, <clears throat> I don't think so. There is any immediate danger to India because, uh, well, for the fact that, you know, Afghanistan, the problem that is happening with Pakistan right now, it is to do with, you know, the, uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and the presence of, you know, a lot of uh, Western forces in Afghanistan and then, you know, the uh, the coming together of a lot of anti-Pakistan and hostile elements who, who mm. are, you know, using Afghanistan as base against Pakistan and then the problems that exist within Pakistan. So India right now is, I don't think so, you know, it's kind of, it affects India, but in the long term, yes, if the issue of terrorism and the security within the South Asian region is not dealt with, if it is not addressed by all the nations, then it definitely is going to affect India. India has its own, you know, very serious internal problems. Mm -hmm. But uh, it does not right now have the problem of, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, Taliban kinds of issues. Yes, it has issues in Kashmir. You know, India is actually kind of ruthlessly suppressing the voice of Kashmiris and many of its minorities. But it, it it's not right now faced with the kind of threat that Pakistan faces from Taliban elements and, you know, the, the forces hostile to Pakistan's internal security. But, you know, the, the latest drone attacks on Pakistan have... Just let me uh, suggest something. I mean, obviously, we now have a new government, as you were saying, in in India, but it's a, a, a government which is whose leader is famous for his antipathy towards uh, Muslims. So can you see that generating a kind of r response that may kind of lean on some of the things that have been happening in Pakistan? Well, um, you know, the I mean, Nawaz Sharif has been kind of... He, he has been very kind towards India in the sense that he has shown statementship in, in, in visiting India in terms of, you know, being very on the, on the right side of the peace process. He has extended full kind of help to India. But, you know, the, the, the government that has, the, the very right-wing government that has taken over in India right now, uh, it has a chance. It can, you know, do wonders in improving relations with Pakistan because this is the party which is traditionally very hostile to Pakistan. Now, if they initiate any kind of peace process with Pakistan, you know, majority of India is supporting them. But the kind of, you know, hatred that exists within this, the Bharatiya Janata Party against Pakistan, uh, it does not really look uh, mm. very likely that it's going to happen anytime soon. I mean, Hamad, I mean, you, you know, Charity was saying there are new governments, but actually the new governments don't look like a bunch of people who are going to cooperate together to bring a regional peace, do they? The, I think the problem is that if you look at the past decade and ever since 9-11, uh, India has become, it used to be the main, Pakistan's main rival, main enemy, and it has been overtaken by America in recent years because of drone attacks, because of Afghanistan, because of a lot of reasons. And so, uh, as, a, as a big aid supplier to Pakistan, you know, to Pakistani governments or the military, it has has a negative impact on the public opinion of the United States. And so India has gone to second place, and you know, the, that has created, on one side, that's a bad thing, you know, but on the good, the good side is that this, this gives an opportunity for the current government, for example, to try and uh, build better relations with, with India because people are, are less concerned with India and more concerned with their own, you know, internal problems with the Taliban, with militancy, with sectarian, you know, killings which are going on. So, uh, but the problem as, as you know, was as, as just been mentioned as well is that uh, the government right now in India is is a right wing government. It, 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 there was better chances under. Uh, I mean, it, the, and so I think there's a lot of artificial kind of you know. Noah Shif goes to India and Modi invites him, and so they do it. But it's not really sincere. I, I don't think it's there's a there's a lack of sincerity that's there. It's just for a show at the moment. But I think we need to wait and see how it. Mm. So, Charity, I mean, you, you raised this about the, you know, the different governments in, in, the, in the region, but kind of the sense we're getting from the discussion is that uh, maybe these changes aren't going to produce a, a, a very good outcome. 
Yeah, you know, the, um, as uh, he said that uh, this is not the time and this is looking artificial to the talks and I think that the best solution is to have the, the, the talks, not the, not the war, not the fighting. And the, in that whole region, I think we need to have a, a good talks with the neighbor countries like in Afghanistan and India. And the, the India is not our enemies only for the, uh, since uh, the 9-11. Uh, India is our enemy since the partition. And we have to, somebody have to take the initiative for the good relationship. And as I mentioned earlier on, that uh, the, the trade is a good trend and trade is a, a, a good tradition to invite them and to do the trade we need because this time uh, this century need a trade not the war so we have to change our uh, things to uh, to to do this uh, something better and you know the, for the terrorism if they have also the our government had took the initiative for the uh, talks with the uh, Taliban that is ongoing process the the first attempt Will I think it be there, or is it a closed process after this no, attack? No, because that was the first attempt, that which, is, which, is, which was not uh, successful. Uh, we are hoping we will try it again. And I think that the... Is that the government's policy, to, to, to re-engage with the talks? Because, I mean, most of what we're hearing is that, OK, that's done, we're switching to a military response. So, so, so what is the government policy? Is it to continue? No, we, we, our, our government has the, the, the stance that we should... Uh, have the the talks with the Taliban. If that is not successful, then obviously we will we will defend that on strongly, and we will we will fight with them. And we because at at this stage we don't want to involve uh, ourselves in all of our internal issues because there's so so many external issues like in the borders and everywhere. So I think we 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 want the peace on the way of the, the talks, not on, on, on the war. I, I think I think something I want to add, that there's a huge, you know, there's a huge vacuum, there's, a, there's Nawaz Sharif, the prime minister, is seen to be, he's not really there, you know, like whenever you have attacks, you know, this Karachi attack is, you know, such a big attack, and there's a feeling that he's not there, he's not, you know, speaking to the nation, talking, you know, uh, on, the, on the media, he just seems to be kind of disappeared, not really there and you need at this moment you need a leader who's who's strong who's who's seen to be leading the people who's who, who's who's uh, extending his sympathies to you know victims of these uh, atrocities and you know so there's a it's kind of being filled this vacuum you know with, with, with militancy or it's this it's being seen as a, maybe the military is in charge what is Noah Sharif really doing so mm. he's, he's kind of failing as a leader right? do you think do you think that's true is 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 the uh, the army kind of overshadowing the civilian government? I, partly I agreed with Hamad, uh, but uh, as Mr. Choudhury said that India, they are just trying to you know, put blame on India, trying to you know, hide their deficiency because they can't cope up with the situation. There are a number of platforms what this government should have used, but they haven't even touched it. All parties conference, straight away they should have called. Then SARC, where is SARC? Then Commonwealth, then United Nations. Number of, you know, Asian regions, they, they can have, you know, Afghanistan, India, you know, China. They can bring these countries on, the one, on one table. Modi is not going to do nothing. We are just blaming because if you see our prime minister's, uh, you know, recent trip, he was trying to have his own business build up. So he will have uh, those things. Very soon you will see, other than they are trying to blame. Okay. What PPP did in last in la last time, they are not even near by this. The only solution at the moment, uh, uh, John, uh, just trying to have uh, all parties conference, and with the clear vision, do or die. Simple is that. And you know, uh, terrorists they are dying. They are dying. You know, like Murtaza said, Shia sex, Sunni sex. Nobody is safe. Only three entities are safe. No Enlik, no Ashif. They haven't uh, got any damage from, you know, uh, a terrorist. PTI, they are safe. Jamaat Islami, they are safe. These three political parties, they are safe. They got no fear to go anywhere, apart from religious, you know. And everybody is saying the right wing is in India. No, right wing is in, in Pakistan as well. They are rightist. Do you agree with that? Well, you know, coming to your first question, uh, the government of Nawaz Sharif literally it hasn't been assertive the way it should have been. Uh, it has lacked confidence. It has lacked leadership. I'll give you an example. Our media house, which is you know the largest media group in Pakistan, uh, we have been 
illegally shut down for over 50 days now. Uh, there have been Supreme Court orders to open, you know, our channels, six of our family channels. They have been shut down. Now our leading news channel has been taken off air, uh, suspended, li license suspended for two weeks. You know, when at the height of the crisis, it was Nawaz Sharif's duty to come forward, lead the nation, you know, whatever the mistakes if Jio had made, find a solution, you know, bring the different warring parties together and move forward. It has been going to be now two months. All the Nawaz Sharif government has done is to just, you know, the double door. It has not shown leadership in that case of the media crisis as well as in the case of terrorist, you know, incident. Now, it is, it is only one year that Nawaz Sharif has in power, but, you know, all what has happened in the last two to three months should serve as an eye-opener for Nawaz Sharif to actually realize that he needs to lead the nation. He is the elected prime minister. No matter what other institution is strong in the country, Pakistan army has always been there as an assertive, you know, strong partner in everything, which is fine. But when it comes to civilian government, people have given you a mandate. Nawaz Sharif needs to really show genuine leadership in all these cases, which uh, he hasn't shown, it, it is true, uh, in, in the last uh, few months since he has been in power. But let's see that we can hope that uh, he has probably that learned lesson from what has happened and uh, that he's a changed man. Mm. Uh, Chad, I mean, if there's, if there's a perception that it's, a, that it's a weak government, if the drone strikes are starting again, is this perhaps a situation in which Imran Khan will benefit politically because there's such hostility to the drone strikes and they're kicking in again? Uh, first, I will respond to both of the, their questions. And, you know, the, the PP, uh, the Abrar mentioned two times the PP government take the, that step. PP, if they... They, they have done well in, in their government in five years in financial issues, in the terrorism. Why the people uh, to, uh, not to support them? Why they, they failed in, in the election? And they, uh, they lose the election on very bad ways. Only they have the seats in, in, in Sindh, which is obviously that is the, the People's Party's hub. We can, we can accept that. But because they are all policies on the trade, on the terrorism, on the foreign policy, all all were failed. So that's why, because the only Mr. Rahman Malik was by that time he was the interior minister. He was only show his statements, but not anything was practical. And I will uh, respond to the Mr. Mutazad question because the. The only PMLN government, Nawaz Sharif, was only supporting to the GEO in all their crises because they have their own personal issues. They, when the Hamad Amir was attacked, they, they straightway and bluntly they give the statement against the ISI. ISI is the, also is a part of the government, and we, at the end, up, uh, up to now, we are we are the only party who are supporting them. The PTI against them. And the other, other so many, the, the, all the channel are against them, and the government have taken the firm state. Only we are supporting them. So uh, uh, he mentioned that the Supreme Court order has been made, and that has not been implemented yet. There are so there are two, three issues on behind that because they, the ISI, they don't want them to reinstate their license. In, in, in Pakistan, and the, as ISI, the part of uh, still, we have taken this, the boldly step to support them. So I, I, I don't think so. They should have these sort of uh, thinking about our government. And now we are trying our level, level best to bring the peace, prosperity in our country, and only there's one year to the form the government. And there are so many issues from the past 10, 15 years, which started from 2000, then when the People's Party government uh, came, the, there was no money in, in, in the, the, there was no uh, uh, trade, there was no, uh, the foreign investor was not even think about to go to Pakistan. And now they have the built their uh, confidence they are going to Pakistan for the investment. Okay. Hamad, uh, right. just, just let me bring Hamad in here. I mean, do, do you think that, I mean, it's, it's one thing to win the election, it's another thing to succeed as a, uh, to succeed as a government. Do you think that, um, you, you were suggesting that it looks like a weak government, um, do you think that with the beginning of the drone program again that Imran Khan will gain politically out of that? I think firstly I would say that it's kind of, you know, laughable to talk about investment when you are having, uh, you know, such airport, blown airport up. being blown yeah. up. You know, this is where, 
Uh, you know, so you can't really. Yeah, this so is a, this is all you know, kind of like a no, wrong no, kind no, of priority. No, 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 no. I mean, this is the wrong kind of priority. Is where your number one priority should be security. Then it's you know, uh, education. We still the GDP is, you know, what two percent being spent this year on education. No education, no social welfare. So you're thinking about investment and all of these things, but your airport is being attacked. So it's the wrong kind of approach. And the second. The so second issue with the drone things that I want to really make a point you is that, mention that, that energy projects in Pakistan. But, Why you are not mentioning? But, um, yeah. What I want to say, <laughs> say about the drone attacks is that there, there will not be a lasting solution with the drones because if you look at the history of all these conflicts, you know everyone likes to say, oh well, you know it was in the 80s that the uh, uh, Pakistanis and the you know ISI and the CIA were supporting the Mujahideen. But if you look at, if you go into really the history of it, the the um, uh, the Americans started funding the Mujahideen before the Soviet invasion. Yeah. This is uh, in uh, former CIA director Robert Gates' mm. own memoirs. So, I mean, uh, American influence and role in this entire region. The, I think Pakistan needs to have a balanced relation with America. They need to have a relationship which is, uh, you know, which is is not, you know, based on this kind of. Uh, you know, collusion on drone attacks and things. And Pakistan needs to also diversify uh, with, uh, you know, more, uh, look to more other regional countries like China, like Russia, other powers in, in Asia, because Pakistan is, after all, it's an Asian country, it's not an American country. Mm. So, I mean... What yeah. do you think the chances are of the, of the, of the military and the, and the Pakistani elite uh, breaking from that kind of uh, American overlordship? Sorry, what chances do you think there are of the Pakistani military breaking from that relationship with the Americans? No, that's not possible. Uh, Pakistan really, you know, for its a lot of its support, Pakistan's government and military, they rely on America. Mm. That is, it's unfortunate, but that is what it has come to be that, uh, you know, a lot of aid from international institution has to come with American approval. And no matter how much Pakistan hates America and vice versa, uh, this, you know, love it relationship is going to continue. I'm going to have to stop you there because that's uh, all we've got time for in this episode of Analysis. I'd like to thank my guests and, of course, you at home for watching. Please tune in again for future discussions. And don't forget that you can keep up with what we're talking about on the programme by following us on Twitter at the address below or by following the Islam Channel Current Affairs team on Facebook. Until next time, good night.